When you thought that your all day print was successful, the last thing you wanna see when you get home is that it only printed half of it and the top is actually missing. But unfortunately, this is what happened to me when I tried printing my first part with PETG infused with carbon fiber. No problem, I thought. I've recently seen a tutorial on this and it seems like there are lots of potential solutions. But those are famous last words. I cracked open the CNC kitchen video that I had seen just the day before, coincidentally, and I thought, fantastic, my print is still attached to the build plate, so let's heat up the plate so that it doesn't come off. But the difficulty is that you can't just tell Bamboo Slicer to print the rest of the print, especially because it didn't realize there was an error, so it thought this thing printed successfully. As it turns out, you have to go deeper and edit the physical G-code that's sent to the printer, and even though I program as a living, G-code still scares me and it's not something that I had ever manually edited myself. But then I had the kind of idea that can only come to you at 11 p.m. when you're exhausted and you don't have time to think through things properly. I thought, what if an LLM could modify the G-code for me so that it continues this print while I get the sleep that I desperately needed at the time? We know LLMs can write normal code very well, so why not G-code? So I took some measurements, I did my best to home the printer, and I asked GitHub Copilot to fix this G-code for me so that it continues just the rest of the print. I asked it to make sure that it was 100% safe, and I said, absolutely, here is some 100% safe code that you can use to continue the rest of your print. I hit print, but then I heard the sound that no 3D printer owner ever wants to hear. So we will talk about how I eventually saved this print and the lessons I've learned if I ever have to do this in the future. But first, let's dissect exactly how we got here. So, I was really excited to crack open my first spool of carbon fiber pet G. This just looks so good, look at that. I know everyone says that, but it's one of those things that you really have to like see for yourself. This just looks incredible. And I was hoping that the prints would come out looking as good as this does. The only issue really is that it's incredibly abrasive. So luckily I already had my hardened steel nozzle on the printer. I dried it really thoroughly using my Qi 2 E1 dryer and I knew that you can't use it in the AMS light because it's so abrasive, it might wear down the gears that are inside the AMS light. No problem, I thought. The Qi 2 E1 dryer can use the boxes as like dry boxes that you can print from directly. So I set this up to print from the dry boxes. There was a small issue with this initially. I had clearly forgotten tip number five from my 13 tips video, and I did something very stupid, which is that I printed with like a little bit of PT TFE tubing in the dry box and in the printer, but I didn't have a length of tubing in between because for some reason I thought that wasn't necessary. And then as the print head moved, the whole dry box came down with it, fell onto the floor and the print stopped with an error. But I quickly realized the mistake and I set it up again with a whole length of PTFE tubing, which means that there's like a constant length of filament between the dry box and the printer and there's no issue with sudden movement. So I fixed the first issue and I thought it was going to be set up for success and I thought it was going to print successfully overnight. By the next morning it hadn't printed yet so I went to work and I was really excited when it said print successful. I couldn't wait to get home and play with my first fully 3D printed carbon fiber part. The issue was that when I got home I realized that some of it was missing. Luckily I had the same part printed successfully before in a translucent PETG so I could compare the two but the carbon fiber part that had just printed was missing the top like 10-15% of it. So from the morning I had actually taken a short video of it uh, finishing the print but actually when I watched this video really closely I realized that you can see it air printing the last thing like it's above the part itself and I felt silly and I wish I had paid more attention in the morning and noticed this earlier maybe I could have prevented it but okay we found ourselves in this situation, how do we fix it now? And it's annoying because the printer has air print detection, but I think at least on the A1, this is partly dependent on the AMS. So it knows that it's air printing if the AMS isn't pushing filament through or something. But this must have not been triggered here because it was printing from the dry box. 
so it had no way of figuring out whether material was meant to be pushed through. Luckily I had just seen a video on this so I knew there were multiple solutions and luckily they're simple, at least conceptually. So I know you can print the remaining part and then super glue them together. It's kind of unelegant. I wasn't sure if the super glue would hold up in the dryer because this is a part that's meant to be dried actively. I know you can play with your Z offset so the printer thinks it's printing from scratch but it's actually printing from the top of the print but I couldn't find a way to change this on this bamboo printer. The printer can't even tell you the coordinates of where the tool head is which is kind of silly. That's such an important part of a 3D printer surely. The third way is the way that I would try and it's to modify the g-code. So you take the g-code of the entire print, all 300 and something layers, you just remove the first layers and you remove some of the initialization stuff that might bump into the print and then you send that to the printer and in theory it's as if it's continuing the print from where it failed. And this sounds very simple conceptually but the difficulty as we will see is in editing the g-code so that it does this. And even though this is kind of harder than the other solutions, I don't mind something hard, especially when you can learn something interesting and you can pick up a tool for your arsenal that you can use when you get this mistake in the future. So I had some issues initially. You have to home the printer, but you can't home while there's a print on there because it might crash into it. So I removed the plate with the carbon fiber part on it. I did it as carefully as I could without popping the part off. Luckily I had a second build plate which was textured. I put that on. I said, uh, oh, they're probably the same thickness. We'll come to that in the learning points later. So it homed using the other build plate that's empty. I then put back on the build plate with this part on it and I made sure the bed was heated as per Stefan's recommendation. I also took multiple measurements and averaged them out to reduce the risk of any measurement error. I wanted to see exactly where the print had failed and I came to the conclusion that the next layer I needed to print was layer 259. So this is where like I was a bit scared about the bamboo closed off ecosystem. I thought like oh what if you can't even export g-code? What if you can't even run g-code? But luckily all of that is possible. So I figured out how to export the g-code you have to unzip it. It's in some weird .gcode.3mf format, but I figured out that you unzip it and there is like a .gcode file within there. The thing is, I'm a programmer, but when I opened this thing, it just, it terrified me. I had never seen anything like it. It was many millions of lines of code and I'd never seen something like that in my life. I thought, okay, LLMs can help normal code. So let's see if LLMs can help this specific G-code problem. So I opened the code in VS Code instead and I cracked open GitHub Copilot. I described the problem to it and I asked it to fix the G-code for me. Thought about it for a long time and then it ended up with a piece of code that it said will fix my problem. It said, oh, this thing is going to print from layer 259. It's removed all the rest of the code. But I did some sanity checks and I like prompted it to be extra careful. I said, the print is still on the build plate. Can you be extra careful, please, to make sure that it doesn't do any of the automatic bed leveling or any of that stuff because it'll crash into the print. And I also sanity checked it. So I figured out like, oh, it's gonna continue from this line. So I went to that line and it was close to the exact line it had to continue from, but it wasn't exact. So I asked it to check that too. It said, oh, okay, I've double checked it. It is now 100% safe. And yep, you were right about the exact line. Let's go from this line instead. It gave like two options. One of them seemed a few lines short. The other one seemed more correct, but it had the continued print missing. And it had asked me to copy and paste from layer 259 onwards. That's okay, I found it, I copy and pasted it. I quickly skimmed it and I saw that in the earlier lines, it sets the correct temperature and bed temperature for the PETG carbon fiber. So I thought we were good to go. Again, famous last words. I figured out how to send the G code to the printer. You just have to drag and drop the G code onto the preview tab in Bamboo Studio. It gave me a small warning. It said, this G code is for PLA, but you have pet GCF. Are you sure? I checked with Copilot. I checked the code myself and the settings were correct for PETG carbon fiber. It's, it must be more of a cosmetic thing. Maybe we didn't tell it the correct G code for this is 
PETG carbon fiber, but the settings were all correct. So I sent it to print, but I had my finger on the power button in case we had to kill it if it tried to print at PLA temperatures. But luckily that was just cosmetic, so it was using PETG carbon fiber settings. But then I heard this horrible grating sound when the printer crashed into my print. So I stopped it ASAP. I might have flipped the power switch off, but I was really worried that I had wrecked my printer. So I went back to the code. I told Copilot what had happened. It looked through the code and it said, oh, I'm so sorry. But it said, okay, I found the problem now. It was this code that was doing a bit of unnecessary initialization. I'll remove all of the unnecessary initialization. And it gave me a new bit of G code that was shorter. It had some of this initialization missing and it said now it is 100% safe. Maybe I shouldn't really have trusted this. We'll get to like the learning points of what I would have done differently in the future. But it was like nearing midnight. I really wanted the rest of this thing to print. From my experience, I know that when you point out a specific problem to an LLM and it tells you it's fixed it, it can hallucinate, but usually when it knows the exact problem, it can fix it. So I did want to give this another shot. So again, I sent this to the printer. There was the same PLA cosmetic warning message. I checked the file again. It was still using carbon fiber PETG settings. So again, I ignored it. I hit print and then lo and behold, as if by magic, it continued the rest of the print. And the next morning I was able to uh, pop this part off of the print bed and it looked incredibly strong. There was like a bit of a seam, which we'll talk about in the learning points, but the part was sturdy and I have then used it for its intended purpose and it is 100% functional. You can dry silica in it, it can hold silica perfectly fine and it is very dimensionally stable as I hoped the PETG carbon fiber would be. So what do we learn from this and how do we prevent nearly wrecking the printer in the future? And how would I improve the separation between the first print and the second print if I had to do this in the future? And I have three learning points really. So number one, how do we prevent it crashing into the print in future? Something that I've learned from using LLMs very heavily and especially using them for code is that it is much, much easier to read code than it is to write it. And how would that help here? Well, what I should have really done is read the G code, asked the LLM to explain what each bit does if it was lacking some comments, and then I could have picked up that, oh, it was doing some initialization that wasn't necessary. Even if I'm not competent enough to write the entire G code myself if I had to, so that's learning point number one. Just do your best to read the code that it's written, even if you couldn't have written it yourself in the first place. To help with this, I will be releasing for free for everyone the initialization code that I had to use in this print uh, that would have started the print. And then uh, in the future, I can copy and paste the rest of the print from whatever layer underneath that. I will release this, but I cannot be held responsible for any errors if you use this and it crashes your print. Just note that it's designed for PETG carbon fiber, so the temperatures and the settings are gonna be off. It's meant as an example, like I don't intend anyone to copy and paste this blindly and use it. I intend for you to use this as a learning example so we can avoid these kind of mistakes in the future. Number two, so I realized that the issue was like double extrusion. So actually when it was printing initially, it was kind of bumping into the old print a little bit. And then after a couple of layers, it was printed more cleanly because there had been some separation. But the initial issue was that it was printing too low. And I think this issue was caused by the different thickness of the two plates. This is the smooth plate. And I suspect this is narrower than the other one. This is 1.1, call it 1.1 mil. What about the textured plate? Yeah, this is significantly narrower. It was like 0.9 of a mil. There certainly are points that are narrower. So remember that I took my measurements using the smooth plate, but I homed using the other plate that was lower down. So that explains why I actually started a few layers further down than I thought it would. So the way to prevent this in the future, ideally, if you have a second build plate that's the same, it's the same type, you can hone using that build plate, or I could have accounted for this in my height calculation, and I think I could have got it to start at the correct point regardless. 
The third learning point, this applies for 3D printing and it also applies to anyone using LLMs to write code. You should always understand the code that you're running. Don't run code that you don't understand what it's doing. So I hope you found this useful. If you've learned something from this, let me know down below. If you want to add anything, like if there's anything I could have done better and prevented this, also let me know in the comments below. I love how vibrant this community is of 3D printers. People are always helping each other learn and trying to learn from each other's mistakes. And I think that's really a great thing. And if you like this video, I think you'll really like this video on 13 tips I wish I had known before I started 3D printing. Why am I doing that?